Hi, this is Kenny Mann, and if I, being your guitar instructor, could only show you one thing, what do you think it would be? Would it be how to play power chords, for example? And my answer would be no, it's not. Would it be perhaps maybe how to learn cage theory? No, my answer to that would be no still. Or maybe you would think it would be how to strum a tune. No, I would not, if I had only one thing to show you, I would not teach you any of these things. No, what I would teach you is more important than all these concepts and topics combined. Um, you know, the internet provides us guitar players with a wealth of information and resources, and you can find virtually any song transcribed with tablature and music on the internet available at your fingertips to download but the big problem comes in knowing what you're looking at so if I could only teach you one thing that one thing would be how to make sense of music not only the music staff up here but as well how to read the tablature how to read you know what does all these funny symbols mean is what I would show you because once you know this, you can go find your music to your favorite songs and you can learn anything with your music. All right, what I'm going to do here is show you some of the basics. Um, first of all, we're looking at here a blank music staff and a blank tablature staff. The music staff is on the top and it has five lines. And right here, this little funny thing's been around for hundreds of years. It's called the treble clef. And that means it's a treble instrument. Um, you could have a bass clef, for example. Let's go up here and look at the bass score. That's what a bass clef would look like. And, you know, a bass guitar player would play using a bass clef. But we are a treble instrument. So, we have the treble clef. All right. Right here, you see these two fours stacked on top of each other there? That is the time signature. That tells us we're going to get four beats per measure. And now you're thinking, what the heck is a measure? Well, let me show you. We're going to add a measure right here. I've got my music bar. And we'll add one right here. And we'll add another one right here. These are called music bars. Um, what I have done, I just basically broken it up into four segments here. And each of these segments is a measure. All right. Now you have the measure in the traditional music notation. And down here in the tab, you also have a measure. And basically what this is telling us, the time signature, is that each of these measures get four beats. And the beat, of course, is, you know, if you're listening to a song, you start tapping your foot, you're most likely tapping your foot to the beat. Um, it's also telling us uh, basically four quarter notes um, for four beats. And that's per measure. All right. Now, that's out of the way. Now, let's look at this tab staff. Now, tablature is great for guitar players because we can put a number on this tab staff. And by looking at that, I know automatically what to play. All right. Let's take that, that zero away real quick. All right. Now, if you have your guitar with you, perhaps you just lay it down in your lap so that it's, you know, facing up towards you. And if you notice right here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six lines going across. Now, the music staff had five lines going across. And while this looks like the music staff, these are totally two different things. Now, the tablature is kind of giving us a visual of the guitar. Imagine the guitar laying down in front of you. This would be the low E. 
or your thickest string. This would be the A, this would be D, this would be G, that would be B, and that would be your high E. So let's run through that again. This is your low E, this is your A string, this is your D string, this is your G string, this is your B string, and this is your high E string. So if I place that zero back there on that line there, that is on a note that occurs on the low E string. All right, so which note is it? Well, the zero means we're going to play the string open. All right, now if it was a one, that means we'd play on the first fret. So if you can count, it's really easy. Um, so say if it was 13. Well, let's try that again. 13. That means we'd play the 13th fret. Really easy. Now, up here in the music staff, that's a different story. That's We got a funny little black dot there, and it's got a flagpole, and it's got a little flag there. And that's our musical note but right here let's what we're doing is we're learning how to read the tab and the tab will tell us where to play every time right there what is that we got a little chord formation we have an open a and we're playing the second fret of the d and g strings and we got a kind of a little a power chord there so technically, I just showed you how to play a power chord. But the, uh, the world of music notation uh, is a lot more involved than just this. What about, you know, if you're playing a guitar lead and you play this, what do you think that is? Well, that's the fifth fret of the G. And then that's the seventh fret of the G. But then we've got this funny little line going across right here. And then we've got the H down there. Well, this is something that comes in handy with the tab that we won't learn or won't be able to see in the music notation. Um, this is a hammer-on. And if you, hopefully you've heard of a hammer-on before, but this is how a tab would notate that. Which means that we pick the first note and we hammer on to the second note without picking it. And that is that particular notation. And as you can see, we have a lot of more stuff to learn. I mean, this stuff is, and we're just on tablature. Now, what about something like this? is this telling us now we know that in the tablature we know that's our open E string but the tablature does not tell us how long to play the note for it doesn't have it it just tells you where to play and that's where the music notation would come in handy for us because up here we with these notes right here it tells us um, these right here, with the black circle right there, and the line going up, those are quarter notes. Let's let's change strings here because I don't want you to get com too confused here because of all those lines up there. Let's try this. All right, that's a lot easier to see. You can see these notes. They, of course, we can put them wherever we want, and depending on where they are on the music staff will tell us what notes um, and the look of them the shape if they're you know if their circles filled in will tell us if it's what type of note it is but these are quarter notes and quarter notes if you remember the four four I said that we get four quarter notes per measure so each of these measures we can have four quarter notes all right 
Now, that means we know, we can combination with the tab and the music, we know automatically how long we hold these notes out for and what notes to play. Okay, let's look at these four measures and try to figure out what we, we would play by looking at this. All right, we don't have a tempo set, um, so let's set the tempo real quick. Um, tempo marker. We're going to set it at 80 beats per minute. All right, so this is our tempo marker. This tells us how fast we would play this. And I have it at 80 beats per minute. So we have our time signature and we have our tempo. Um, now we've got four measures of music here. All right, we know where to play because we've got the first fret of the B there. We've got the second fret of the G, and then we're going to go back to the first fret of the B string. All right. Now, if we counted this off, one, two, three, four, um, each time I said one, two, three, or four, we'd be playing one of these notes. That'd be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you can clap it out, which helps um, not to play, but just to concentrate on the rhythm. What I'm going to do is count one and, two and, three and, four and, and then we're going to clap these four measures. And each time I say a number, you should be clapping. So let's give this a try and see how it works. Okay, on the count of four. One and two and three and four and 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 and that's your quarter notes and right here you've got a black circle and you've got a flagpole either going up or down. So, if we played this, what would it sound like? Let's go ahead and try to play it. Okay, on the count of four. One and two and three and four and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... I want to show you... A few more cool things about tab. Um, for example, we can notate bends right there. That that would show us that on the seventh fret of that G string, we're gonna bend that seventh fret. We're gonna bend that note up to a full step, and a full step would be it would sound the same as example your ninth fret when you bent that you're you're bending it a full step so a full step is two frets so that's your ninth fret that's what you're bending it to sound like but we're doing this on the seventh fret you see how i bent it up and it sounds the same pitch as the ninth fret okay Here's another example. We have, let's get rid of that bend. We have a slide. All right, see that line going up to the number? And SL dot, that signifies slide. So what we're gonna, what we're gonna do is slide from below the note up to the note. And right here, we can add some vibrato, a little squiggly line right there above the tab. It tells us to add vibrato. And when we're adding vibrato, we're just kind of little baby bends, I guess you could say. Or if you ever seen B.B. King play, and he, he does his butterfly vibrato, we're basically just shaking the string back and forth. So if I looked at this tab for this note, 
I'm sliding in to the seventh fret and then adding vibrato. Pretty cool. All right, here's some other cool stuff you can do with tab. We got right here P.M. I wonder what that stands for. Well, that stands for the words palm mute. And a palm mute is when you're, is it to do with your picking hand, is you're going to lay your uh, palm across the strings. And when you're picking, you're not letting that string ring out normally because your palms are out there resting on it. So you've got this muted sound. And it's, that's a palm mute. And of course, right here in the tab, it says palm mute. And then we've got these little lines. And that's where we hold, uh, that means, see, it's over these notes. So we're going to have the palm mute carries out over both of these notes. And then right there is a little line to signify that the palm mute, the palm muting is over with. Um, there's lots of stuff to show you with the tab because there are so many techniques. And that doesn't even get us started with, you know, whole notes and quarter notes and all that. There's a whole world to this and it's fascinating. And I'd like to show you more, but unfortunately I can't show it all to you in the constraints of this one video. So if this is the type of training that you would like to continue with, I'd like to invite you to join my class called Sight Reading 1. And over the course of 12 weeks, um, I'm going to give you two lessons per week, four quizzes, and uh, on the, during the span of these 12 weeks, um, we're going to learn the absolute, all the fundamentals of reading the music, of reading the tab, and I'm going to drill you kind of like they do in uh, college uh, as far as the rhythm goes. Uh, we're going to be drilling, getting these, uh, learning how to read the rhythms correctly, um, and learning how to le read all the intricate uh, little things that you will find in music. There is no better way to learn the wealth of music that is out there. Uh, if you want to learn Jimi Hendrix, if you want to learn Stevie Ray Vaughan, if you want to learn Chet Atkins, it doesn't matter. All that music is out there for you, but you need to be able to read it. And with my course, um, Sight Reading 1, we will learn how to read music. And the classes will be taught in a similar fashion uh, that you see in this video. Uh, all the music that you will see on the screen uh, will be able, you will be able to download it and keep it on your computer. Uh, not going to charge what you would normally expect to find at an online college or anything like that. Um, I'm only going to charge $29.95 for this 12-week course. Now, realize that this course is taught by a, a guitarist for guitarists. Um, I'm, if you're the oboe player, I don't want to teach you how to read music. What I, The way I look at the music and the way you'll want to look at the music is from through the eyes of a guitar player. And so this is, this is not for tuba players. I mean, we are looking at music for guitar, and that's all. I'm going to have lots of drills for you but we're also going to look at real world songs and we're going to go through them and um you know we're going to go through some Hendrix we're going to go through some Stevie Ray um we're going to go through you know all types of music we're going to look at a lot of different uh genres of music um but I also will beat you over the head with these drills because this is the way to go I mean if you want to learn to play precisely on time and you want to learn all those little tricks of all the greats you'll find it all in the music um, there's so much good many good transcriptions out there I don't think you've lived until you've gone through uh, a Jimi Hendrix song you know 
note for note. With Hendrix, I mean, there is so many small, subtle things that he does that, you know, maybe you do learn songs by ear. And maybe you can pick up a, on a lot of those things, but I guarantee you there's probably things you're missing. If you want to play at that level, you've got to be able to read the music. Yeah, I know people will say all the time that, you know, you know, B.B. King doesn't know how to read music. Jimi Hendrix didn't know how to read music. And that might be true, but that doesn't mean that I, you know, I don't have to learn music or you don't have to learn music. It's kind of like reading and writing, um, but th we're dealing with music. There are a lot of cool things I can show you, but you will have to join the course to see those. So I have provided you a sign-up link right below this video if you would like to join us. So I hope you'll carefully consider it and um, join us for our classes. And that's all for now. We'll see you later.